Hello there. <laughs> I tried to recreate the meme, man. I couldn't hold my laughter. I was just about to say, yeah, Ellie's dropped another reaction. That's the meme, ladies and gentlemen. That's the meme. We based now. What's going on, guys? My name is Ellie Moses, a 24-year-old law and film shooting here in Sydney, Australia. Absolutely shooting his shot. And today, yes, we are already up to the season finale of The Wire Season 1. This one is titled Sentencing. I'm going to get into the reaction. We're going to absolutely have some fun with this thing. And let's, as always, as always, let's absolutely slay this thing, yeah? Bop the Vampire Slayer style. Let's go. Damn, this finale is over an hour. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Some good news. Finally. We lose Wallace and then... Chemo awakens. Can't be both. It can't be both surviving, eh? It's one or the other. Hey, you know. <laughs> Been there long. I want you to put the word out there that Kima back up. Uh, 20 minutes. You know, we didn't want to uh, exactly disturb you. I can make little man, cause he's uh, in the front, I'm trying to snatch the cash off the dashboard. You couldn't make out Weebay. The other one, he's outside in the dark. So, uh, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Man, Weebay uh, had that hoodie on. Well, man, he was like this. Is there anyone here? Weebay was like this, doing, doing these ones. So, Weebay. We tracked their escape route, and Landsman came up with their hoodies. Now, DNA matched human hair from one of the hoodies to Weebay. Oh, okay. Freeman, he tracked a call from the payphone near the scene to string a bell. Page it. Now, the caller was using Bay's beeper code. Crime lab. They left a print off a soda can near that phone, and that matches Lil' Man. We don't have the guns, no prints from the scene, no witnesses. But worse, we're going to be dealing with a Baltimore City jury. And a good man is hard to find in this town. Twelve of them together, especially. <laughs> yeah, without Levi's tampering. An ID of both your shooters would play a whole lot easier come trial. You know, sometimes things just get I like that by Kima. I like that. Sticking by her code, man. You know, not fabricating the thing. You gotta do it right. If it's gonna be hard, so be it. No diddy. Come on, what's the quote? What's the quote? And who by? Oh, all in the game. Traditional West Baltimore. Okay. Fair enough. No, 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 no. We got Ronnie Mo. We ain't just boys anymore, we're sergeants. <laughs> That looked like Method so Man. Far, we picked up 12. I don't think it is, but. Seven on the wing. Maybe even a wire if we get onto a phone. Not while the deputy breathes air. We'll be reassigned before you finish typing up your affidavit. Exactly. How about the feds? You think the deputy's gonna let you take this mess federal? No. What does the deputy need to know? <laughs> Bro, the deputy ain't gonna let you take this to freaking you the preschool. Yeah. <laughs> like, you think he's gonna let you take that federal? <laughs> No shit. No fucking shit. No fucking shit. Rhonda Perlman. She just got a call from an assistant public defender in North Jersey who claims to represent a man by the name of D'Angelo Barksdale. Yeah, meet me in homicide. Bring a tape recorder. 
No drug lawyers, no Levy. Case got some legs on it, don't she? <laughs> don't she? Don't she? Don't she? Damn. Dollars bill. Believe that shit. All right, Hurst even show that kind of money. Yeah. Order of a meal. Oh hell no. Clubs out. We can't talk there no more. Good, you moved out of there. I don't know, man. I mean, if they got a mic up in there, they got you and me saying all kinds of shit. <laughs> oh. Reminds me. He said he'd be in tonight. Thing is, they take you and leave me? Yeah, that's what's fucking me up too, man. Look, well, I'll send it off as soon as I start pressing for discovery. In the meantime, what do you want to do about the people they locked up? We got to pull them. Uh, that's showing a lot of money. Well, if we don't, we run the risk of making them enemies. Speaking of which... You gotta stand by your boys. Is he gonna see the light or what? Let me tell you something, man. He family, all right? He not gonna buck. A day or two in the New Jersey bullpen, he gonna be crying, waiting for bail money like the rest of them. Juxtaposition right. cut? Come on. So let's uh, run the money through the families. That'll hide it some. One of the ways to limit your exposure is what's called a structured plea. That means that you're gonna have to deliver your people, all of them, down to a man. I saw your girl today. I'm gonna start calling yeah, that group it's... Oreo. How's she doing? Okay, I guess. There was, an, I see you. there was an interesting... Moving slow, but moving, you know? I don't know what type of lens they used in that scene right there, but it seemed like, you know when they were going up on the close-up shots and interchanging between Levi, Stringer, um, and Avon, and obviously the camera was slightly looking down at uh, Levi, and then looking tilted slightly up towards um, Avon and Stringer, but it almost looks as if the background itself was like sort of warped. It's almost as if they were using a different type of lens to sort of... Um, it almost seemed like panoramic in a way. Um, and I can't, like, I, I, I don't know the lens terminology to be, uh, too, too well. Um, but it seemed like they were losing a different type of, uh, lens. I don't know what millimeter, but it seemed like it was that effect to make the background sort of warped and, like, make the sort of, um, the, the figure in the center a bit more closer. Or, like, more, um, just more prominent in the frame. Nah, I couldn't go in. This ain't about you, eh? I get back from Jersey, I will. You know, uh, Cole and me, we uh, showed her the spreads. Picked out little man, no problem. Wouldn't go for Weebay. So I tried the fat finger. Damn near down on my knees, begging her to make this play easier in court. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sometimes things gotta play hard. I'm surprised that's not the quote of this episode. <laughs> Real police. Real police! Oh, yeah. Whoa, what's with the hostility? Listen, Ronda Weasley, you need a chill, fam. What the fuck did you do to her? <laughs> you two in the same car. Gonna make for a long ass drive to Jersey. <laughs> Shit. Shit. <laughs> Damn, man. It's just, it's too still in here. Is this, is this like their potential new front here in the funeral home? Change up, y'all. Y'all that paranoid? <laughs> you ain't even been up here before. Tell you, sis, shit is different. We are not gonna talk about nothing indoors. It's a new day. You tell Roberto he gotta make it a serious smoke. I mean, I want them motherfucking fiends in the projects. I want them dropping like flies. You feel me? You send out the word. You let them know we ain't dead yet. About my nephew. Don't fret. Give me a chance to get Roberto. And I'll get up to date. Do what needs to be. Yo. <laughs> um, sorry for putting him out there like that. And that I'm gonna make it up to him. It might be a bit too late for apologies. Most deaf. Most deaf. Hey, can we talk about how involved D'Angelo's mother was right there? Like, from dropping off food to okay. D'Angelo. Hey, D! Hey, Auntie! <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, no, she involved. She a threat. You got that dog in her. Stays in here. Damn straight. I'm sure Proffer in Maryland plays much the same in Jersey, Counselor. And I do agree that with regard to matters involving drug trafficking, your client has been helpful. He's indicated a willingness to testify that he was a lieutenant in Avon Barksdale's drug distribution organization, sold large quantities of drugs for his uncle, delivered money, attended organizational meetings, and on one occasion made a trip to New York on the behest of his uncle. All of which corroborates much of what we already know. All them bodies. 
Damn, they really put Creed to sleep and he ain't getting up for another round. No loose ends. I can understand the guard. She got paid, so she had to go. Orlando, he knew too much, got to snitching, so he had to go. But then there's the kid. Wallace. Got that shit on tape? Mm-hmm. God. His name is Brandon Wright. Brandon broke fingers, gouged an eye out. All kinds of fun. Wallace was the one who saw, but he really ain't think about what they do. You must have known. And you were standing there by that payphone. You knew. What was I gonna do? Huh? I don't call string, the word get back uptown, what's gonna happen then? So you told Wallace to wait. Then you called Stringer and Stringer. He gathered the troops. Yeah. Yo, imagine D'Angelo yeah. testifying against his own uncle. That's going to be cinema. That's if he even gets to testify. Because it might be a case. You might have to sacrifice your family um, to keep the game going. And that shit does happen. Look at Sopranos. <laughs> so, yeah. The Greeks, they got Wallace to point the finger, right? And they went in like cops with handcuffs so they could take their time on brand. And about a week ago, my uncle and String, they called me down to the club. Stringer, he's all worried about Wallace, and I told him. I said, Wallace ain't no snitch. Plus, he's out the fucking game. I told him that. But I needed to do more. I should have done more. But I didn't, and fuck, that's on me. Any idea who they sent at Wallace? Oh, come on, D. Wild guess. <laughs> Man, I don't know. Could have been anybody. You know, shooters come cheap. I don't think so. Not in the pit. Not in his crib. I counted seven beds when I was up there. Where were the youngins? Look, if I knew, I would tell you. All right? I swear to God, I would tell you. I charged with Orlando and the undercover cop. We're still hunting. Him, he in Philly. Damn, he really know. gonna ratted him out like that. Him, <laughs> I don't know, some corner, man. No offense. I don't know where he be staying. He was Meek Mill. say anything to you about the shootings. We don't talk shop in a car. It's a rule we got. Your client must realize that any agreement is dependent on his full cooperation. Well, yo, there ain't nothing else. Deirdre. Oh, freaking the way McNulty handing out them receipts. He's just like, bro, it's like the never ending story here. He's just like, I got one more. Bang. I got another. Bang. I got another. Bang. It's like an infinite supply of like murders, and he just keep going. <laughs> She's one of my uncle's girls. Yeah, but we got people put you with her the night she's killed. Yeah. I didn't know they was going to do her. I swear, they played me. How so? My uncle gave me an eight ball of coke. Told me to take it over there to her. I was surprised because, you know, I thought he dumped her. But he said, nah, I wasn't like that no more. So, yeah, we be take me over there. You know, I walked up, knocked on the door. She came to the door all naked and shit with this little ass robe on. So she's your uncle's girl, but she comes to the door for you naked. She used to do that shit with me all the time, man. Teasing. You know how girls do. Maybe you don't. Oh, no, no, bunk no, man. Bunk no. <laughs> anyway, I'm like, you gonna let me come in? She's like, nah, because she gotta get ready for my uncle to come by later. So I give her the coat. She laughs about how she's gonna put that shit on ice for later on. Refrigerator. No shit about no refrigerator. Like I said, I ain't going. So I turned around, started walking back to the truck, and I heard this shot. Wee Bay, he come running back with this big ass 45 he liked to use so much. Tells me how he was tapping on the window real soft. How with the lights on, she had to walk all the way up because she couldn't see what was on the outside. You know, when she gets up to the window and looks out. All right. Now, I, I'm thinking to myself, 
did so remember d'angelo told the story to Bodie and Pooh and wallace um on the sofa about the tap 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 now i wonder if d'angelo really did that to that woman or right here he's actually telling the truth it was actually weebay and we know weebay's he's a cold-blooded assassin he'll do it like he he does not give a crap that guy like he will do anything in the game like that guy's experience he does not give two shits so i'm more inclined to believe that d'angelo is telling the truth here and he told a lie to the boys on the sofa um i gotta rewatch the sofa scene and see how it was acted out like i gotta look at the micro expressions and the facial expressions because i remember Bodhi looking up to him nah man you're like full of shit like th in that sort of way um so i wonder if Bodhi didn't believe him at the time and d'angelo was just trying to act hard in front of the boys and to scare them to say he's got a body um on on, on his count so i'm just interested to rewatch that scene and see how it was acted out again but i feel like he's because my initial thought was like okay weebay is um already identified as one of the shooters for kima so it would be right for d'angelo to play the card and say okay i'm gonna chuck weebay under the bus here and just say he did the injury to protect my own interests but if it does go to court for instance and they take weebay to trial what if weebay says it wasn't me it was d'angelo and that all comes it's like his word against his um so yeah i think d'angelo is possibly telling the truth here and he probably didn't have it in him to take out one of his uncle's girls but weebay for instance i feel like avon would trust weebay with a task like that um so yeah i think he's telling the truth here all my people, man, my father, my uncles, my cousins. It's just what we do. That's the thing I've echoed throughout since the first episode. You just live. These guys are born into shit. this type of lifestyle. They know no other. You can't breathe no more. I swear to God, I was caught side for eight months. And I was free in jail. Then I was at home. What are you looking for? Freedom. I want it to go away. I can't. I want what Wallace wanted. I want to start over. That's what I want. I don't care where, anywhere. I don't give a fuck. I just want to go somewhere where I can breathe like regular folk. You give me that. You want out of the game. And I'll give you them. He done with it. He done. No, that's ah, great. really great. Yeah, that's a movie. He still got that other murder on him. So the one he got off. Okay. But that case is closed. That trial is done. <laughs> he acquitted. <laughs> Dismissed. We broke it open tonight. Wide open. Let's go. Let's go. So this squares things with Burrell, right? Well, what does he... What are you gonna... He's got me if he wants me. Thing is, I don't think he wants me. Too much stink. <laughs> Too much mess. They're gonna get ugly, little baby style. I like this case. I am up for it. I get cross-designated as an AUSA, and we can really run with it. You know? <sighs> career fucking case. All about the career. Always about the career. Come on, Jimmy. See through it. Don't. Uh. Are they going to make out? Are they? Oh, I thought it was like they were going to make out. And he was getting out real quick. I was like, damn. Um, leave is the other day. I was... Uh... I was. Fuck! I knew it. Don't fall for it, man. As soon as it's a career investment, you'll get the six. Oh, man. It's a dirty game, man. Jesus. you doing? Yeah. Like you never did in the headquarters garage before. <laughs> All I know is that judge. That judge is pissed now. <laughs> He ain't getting what McNulty has. Thanks, Roy. Hey, Lester. Isn't this supposed to be the time you tell me how all fired fucking important this is? <laughs> it's very important, Roy. The Philly number. 
gives us the mope who shot that female undercover. Okay, I can get it to you in an hour. I'm telling you, Fitz, it's the perfect case. You'll love it. Oh, sounds great. Like <laughs> I said, Jimmy, we're not fishing for drug cases anymore. Uh, at least he pulled up the right way this time. <laughs> now, that field office is too close to our CID. We go there, our bosses know it before a meeting's scheduled. Your bosses don't know you're doing this? That's McNulty. That's actually the whole, the whole crew at the moment. You me, a detective named Freeman and Daniels. I can speak for Daniels, brother. He's played this thing out with real heart. Come on. Set something up. What? All right. <laughs> that stringer. Yeah. All right, man. I'll get at you. Oh no, he forgot his briefcase. What a coincidence. Yo, you lock that door, right? Yeah? All right, so listen. It's not street ready, right? So everybody got to work on their own cut and file up. Now, listen to me. Tell them to get this straight. Three parts of this, right? To one of raw, right? And that's how we're going to do it until we get the new stash. Now, I want you to put the word out there that we back up. I knew it was but I <laughs> Hey, the perfect force frame as well. Oh man <laughs> I had to you know why? Because I'm like, okay, I'm like, is it gonna be this season? And it's just like it happens to so me that it's like I was like, wait, this is the shirt he's wearing in that meme. It's that same particular colour. Unless he so happens to be wearing it down the line again. Oh man. No, I <laughs> No! Yes! <laughs> it's iconic! Iconic! Hey, I need a screenshot that. That's gonna be my thumbnail. Oh my gosh. Let me get that screenshot. Yes, baby. Oh my gosh, I need to get it again. Right? And that's how we're gonna do it until we get the new stash. I want you to put the word out there. That we back up. Understand me? I'm watching it again. I don't care. Alright? That's how we're gonna do it until we get the new stash. <laughs> I want you to put the word out there. That we back up. You understand me? We back up. Put the cap good on. Time. Any team with the cap. You guys have a pretty good case here. WWE at the moment. We back up. At least a dozen murders. Including state's witnesses. Arsenal. We back up. Squeeze the box oh, we drew this morning, but like... protection program, we can run wild with this thing. To run with you on this, we need to recognize OC target. Or even better, a connect to counterterrorism or corruption. Corruption. Stuff like that. We have something we can bring to our ASAC. Chase the money. Corruption. What kind of corruption? Yeah. Don't know. What kind you got? Daniels. Ah. That's it. Take the corruption arc. Fuck they got. Some shit they call yellow tops. Why is Neo from the Matrix walking behind Bodhi and Poot right there? Like, my guy just came out of the simulation. It is me? Or did Bodhi always have that tattoo? Or did he get a tattoo? What the fuck is up? Huh? What the fuck is y'all doing? Yo, do what you feel. But be ready to finish what you start. What you doing? This ain't no open market. You know that. Ain't no market at all, nigga. You ain't got shit to sell. Pack that ass up and hold that dude. You know what? What? Fuck. What? Fuck. Get the fuck out of here, bitch. Get your ass out of here. All y'all... See, that's why we can't win. Why not? They fuck up, they get beat. We fuck up, they give us pensions. <laughs> Dapping up, everyone. We did that shit. <laughs> Heard you ain't much as an eyeball witness. Bad as any civilian. Guess so. <clears throat> Where we at? With what? With the case, fool. <laughs> Jesus, give it a rest. What's on the wire? Come on, man. Wire's dead. They changed up after we hit him with raids. Daniels didn't tell you? Hell no. Hell no! <laughs> Don't talk to me about the good shit. <laughs> but how y'all one of my shooters and stuff? Yeah, well, uh... Yeah, we lost the wire, but uh, the good news is D'Angelo's flipped. 
We're talking to the feds about maybe. Fuck those, y'all. You don't want to hear that talk, man. She wants me to quit. She says ain't nothing worth this. So I promised her I'd think about it. Anyway. What took you so long getting up in here? <laughs> Shit. Cars, <laughs> no flowers. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck, Jimmy? <laughs> I couldn't. I, uh... I buckled. I felt, uh... A case like this, it's always you or Sidner or some other black cop who ends up going undercover. You. If I... If I could do it over, you know what I'd do? Drop the gun up somewhere else? <laughs> Put more tape on it. Yeah. <laughs> yes! Uh, I was, I was sort of right. Okay. Sorry, Kima. <laughs> Put more tape. I'm sorry. Anyway, since I got you up in here acting like my bitch and shit, <laughs> with all your guilty ass crying and whatnot, <laughs> maybe you can do something for me. She said you were doing good. Said she was proud of you. How's she doing? Still shook. But she wanted you to have that and told me to tell you she's sorry to be late with it. Don't tell me Bubbles on that relapse. <laughs> Girl, that's such hot. You know? Yeah. This is uh, enough for what I got going on now, man. You, uh, you get, get the rest back to her. You sure? Hey, Give her my love. Hey, McNutty. McNutty. <laughs> Don't tell her. See, see, that didn't even need to, like, expressively say it right there. You just knew from the facial expressions. That's how great it was. That's how great it is. Not just you. Ooh. She whispered in his ear. That wasn't a kiss. She whispered, okay? The world is on its head. <laughs> Maybe she kissed him. I don't know. Um, you know what Lester reminds me of? I don't know if you guys will be thinking this kid's tripping or you'll be thinking, yo, how does this kid know this stuff? But like, Lester kind of reminds me of like, a, like I got to look at the actor's credentials because I don't want to search up anything regarding the actors because I don't want spoilers or anything. But he reminds me of a cop. Or that would he his character would be so fitting, or like the way he acts would be so fitting in a, like a straight out of eighties nineties buddy cop movie. Like he, I feel like he'd fit right into Beverly Hills Cop. He'd fit right into Lethal Weapon. He'd fit right into you know those nineties Martin Lawrence um cop movies. Like it just reminds me of that. Like and I get such throwbacks from Lester's character. I just feel like he'd fit right into those type of movies. And I don't know if you guys will agree with me on that, but like you guys can mention those type of buddy cop movies or like those comedy cop movies um, from the 80s, 90s that he would potentially fit in. You know, I mentioned Lethal Weapon, Beverly Hills Cop. There's a couple others. The Martin Lawrence ones, I've got to remember, like not national security, like the 90s. You know the one where he does the pizza box, dude? Like he's just with the buck teeth and stuff like, I don't know. I just feel like he'd fit into those type of movies. Movies. Guy called for you from the phone company. Say so he's got the number you wanted for a house in Philadelphia. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he a player, man. Casework. Thank you. I don't think I'm giving anything away by telling that Arnold here has had a file on Senator Davis for two and a half years. It took us a while to see it flips it three or four times, exaggerating the values. And now the city's gonna pay him millions to condemn the properties for the renewal project. It's a lot to work with, but we're willing. Oh! Question is, can your cooperator give us the senator or any other political figure? A cooperator? D'Angelo Barksdale. What does he have for us on the money? We haven't gone that deep, have we? Nothing. <laughs> he gives you the drugs and the violence. He gives you Avon Barksdale. String a bell. And they give us the senator. No, fuck the politicians. It's Barksdale and Bell. Those guys have turned West Baltimore into a free fire zone. No one's saying they walk. 
But what you are saying is that if we bring you guys the case, it's your They're going to flip the case. Barksdale and Bell reduce any sentence they get through cooperation, huh? Jesus Christ, are you kidding? You're seeing all this ass backwards. Detective, in this office, we have a mandate to pursue political corruption. Christ, can you believe these guys? Jimmy, look. What? Is it drugs and murder don't cut it anymore, huh? Well, how about terrorism? These guys have dropped 14, 15 bodies. The witnesses, cooperators. That yeah, kind of hyperbole doesn't serve anyone, detective. Damn, this political game, man. This, uh... Rhonda's like, hold it, hold it. Composure. I think we're going with a different direction on this. You know. West Baltimore is dying, and you empty suits are running around trying to pin some politicians. Our strategies don't align. I thought you was real police. Brother. Oh, come on, Jimmy. He's done a lot for you, man. He got you that meeting. I know the he's got no say in the FBI, the higher ups. Like, uh, I don't know, man. Yo, she she got that devil look, D'Angelo's mom, man. I swear that's the face of a mom that's about to whoop your ass with the belt from the rock. Mama Rhodes' belt. Holy I wouldn't want to be in that room with her. So they got you all the way out here, huh? Started out thinking you was in Jersey. You're like, I got four walls to whoop your ass in. I figure they still got you down in Central Booking. You know, you always talking family. They look like they related, actually. I family wonder if they are in real life. Say, well, I'm family. Ain't I? Maybe they got actually his real mother to play the role, so it comes off as, as a bit more natural when they're acting with one another. But if he got to go away... That mean you got to step up and fill his shoes. You ready right. for that? He has no other option? You don't want the best for your no, son? Start a no, new life? I ain't. I ain't ready. And I ain't never gonna be ready for this game. D, come on. Look. They given me a chance to walk away. To start again someplace else. And what you giving them? Nothing. <laughs> Well, she's seen the perks of this lifestyle. Look at the pearls she's wearing, man. He knows it. Now, if you want to get even with him, you can. But you hurt him. You hurt this whole family. All of us. Me and Trina and the cousins. And Donnett, too. It's too late. And your baby. He hurt the family. Your own baby boy. You ain't got family in this world. What the hell you got? I got myself. <laughs> Motherfucker, weebay twitches, they won't even be a trap. <laughs> oh, <that's> a... <laughs> oh, shit. Damn, what's happening? Anything you want to tell me? Is this from the money they took? Been weeks now. Oh. The deputy ops knows what's going on in this unit almost before I do. Oh, the snitching. Except oh. last week, we run the buck up in the box deals club office. And Burrell? They're on it straight away. They're... Once he's a step behind. You see? Oh, that's when he was away. Maybe. He was away. That's right. He was I away doing the testing thing, I think. I look around the office and I see that one of my people is at the academy for him service. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's the deputy fucking ops telling me how concerned he is about the case. He needs to be informed. I mean, he's the deputy fucking ops, man. Yeah, you're scared about your career when it's all about the career as well. Be a little pawn in this chain of command. <laughs> I came on in the Eastern. And it was a piece of shit lieutenant hoping to be a captain. Piece of shit sergeants hoping to be lieutenants. Pretty soon we have a piece of shit patrolmen trying to figure <laughs> the job for themselves. <laughs> and some of what happens then is hard as hell to live down. If one teaches them to be a piece of shit, it's just gonna roll down the ladder. <laughs> There's gonna be pieces of shit everywhere. Comes a day you're gonna have to decide whether it's about you or about the work. We're working a flight warrant today. There's, there's a lot to do here in office. I'd be careful with that, though. 
<laughs> don't understand the trigger pull used to be like. <laughs> don't want to shoot the walls, man. <laughs> That was his excuse he used as well. <laughs> his car of attempting, yeah, Jack Weebay's car. Get him out. Oh, bro. Easy, easy snatch and grab. Like, easy. Easy bait and switch right there. He's cold, he's cold. <laughs> Got lucky. <laughs> Philadelphia police. He gonna miss the WrestleMania event. Officer Mace, ASA Perlman. You got a problem with the lawyer? Okay, put the asshole on. Is it me or do I do I sense a bit of ego from Rhonda here? I don't know, like a bit of showmanship. From, like I don't know, I just I don't know if she's showing off or like you know showcasing to her friend like the contact she has or like what she's done and the way she's speaking put the asshole lawyer on to show like i don't know what, what kind of dominance she has or like the authority she has here and that she's playing everyone i don't know there's a little bit of ego from ronda i don't know if i like that right there there's no humbleness in this game you can't be humble in this game if you're too soft you're just gonna you're gonna get thrown out you're gonna get eaten this is he This is he. <laughs> Excuse me. Sit. Sit. What's happened now? Here. For the number of clearances I'm looking at here, I mean, Christ, for the first time this year, we got the clearance rate up over 40%. That's on the one hand. But... On the other hand, I know the deputy ops got a call from the first deputy U.S. attorney this morning asking whether an asshole such as yourself really works for us. You're a good detective. I gotta admit, you got some stones on you. Did you actually call the first deputy in that empty suit? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see you land okay, Jimmy. So tell me, where don't you want to go? Oh, he had this conversation, was it with Bunk or was it Lester Freeman? When they ask you, where do you want to go? You tell him, or oh, don't tell him this. It was about the pawn shop unit thing, I remember. I wonder what he's gonna say. The Baltimore City jurors are capable of just about anything. You want to sit around for months on end, scratching our way through a bunch of half-heard, half-said telephone conversations and see how well you do? I'll certainly respect the effort. It's not just talk <laughs> on the wire. We've got seized money and a lot of dope on the table. And a lot of violence. All of which stops way short of Mr. Barksdale. You know this. All of it except for the New Jersey bust. That one he eats. Maybe he does. Maybe we acknowledge you've got Mr. Bryce called for the murder of Orlando Blocker and the wounding of the police officer. Who? We be. Representing Mr. Bryce, <laughs> I'm fairly confident that to avoid the death penalty, he'll proffer to at least a uh, half dozen of your open murders. Naming co-conspirators? For that kind of cooperation, I'd be willing to consider straight life. No, indeed. I believe Mr. Bryce is uh, ready to take sole responsibility for all of his crimes. Still, you walk away with at least a half a dozen clearances. Assets. You take the strip club, you take whatever trucks and cars you can link to the drug trafficking, and of course, whatever cash you've seized. He's got dozens of other properties. The funeral parlor, the towing company. No, no, no. <laughs> you get the cars because you can tie them to illegal activity. But there's nothing else in his name to take. So you keep most of the money, most of the real estate, and Stringer Bell stays on the street with his hand on the throttle. If you have a charge against Mr. Bell, file it. Otherwise, it's my understanding that nothing <laughs> in all those hours of tape implicates him. This guy is a sneak motherfucker. <laughs> He's smart Three this or one. four years ain't enough, Maury. Not for Avon Barksdale. No? D'Angelo Barksdale by detectives assigned to a special detail under the command of a city narcotics supervisor. 
do you guys know the meme of like all the guys in suits rocking up to court <laughs> that's this right here. that's all the boys rocking up to court they're all in the same room they're all behind each other <laughs> that's the whole ps5 party chat right there airport revealed that a kilogram of nearly pure heroin was concealed beneath the spare tire in the car trunk in accepting this plea mr barksdale acknowledges his role in procuring those drugs with the intent to dilute package and sell retail amounts of heroin did you question can we talk about right there i love that callback to the first very court scene we ever saw in the show with d'angelo barksdale with um was it i gotta remember was it Jimmy McNulty who walked into the courtroom and saw Stringer there? And then he walked out. And then dead again, he walked out again here. I've got to go back and rewatch that scene. But like, please give me credit for the memory right here. Because I feel like that was a neat callback to that episode. And I want to look at the seating positions. I got a quote. Yeah, okay, it was. It was Jimmy who walked into the courtroom. Stringer was there taking notes with his glasses on. And then um, Jimmy McNaughty um, walked out as well. And this is the same thing right here. Like it. Tariq Boyd, all tied to the same gun. Plus, we got the stick-up boys. Brandon Wright, John Bailey. With Orlando, that makes six. Plus the attempted murder on a police. That it? I do better, I give him more? Life no parole means what it says. <laughs> this proffer keeps you off death row, but that's all it does. You were on the wrong side of a cop getting shot, Mr. Bryce. You want to even dream about straight life for all these bodies? You've got to wake up talking about Avon Barksdale and Stringer Bell. Nah, but as to murders, you might as well give them what you have. Because anything you leave out is outside the deal. If they learn about it later, they can charge you later. Fuck it then. For another piss sandwich and some tater salad, I'll go a few more. <laughs> hey, he a real one in terms of keeping it real for the game and his boys. I'm thinking he might get weak on that cop getting shot. Yeah? Where's the body? Drew it hell. Behind the reptile. <laughs> get back in the weeds with Michael Fine was left of him. All right, that's seven. What else you got? Uh, this man called. I've been witnessing. <laughs> He's doing good. lady. And what's his name? The maintenance man. He says it with Gant. such confidence. Yeah. Gant. Yeah. Gant alone. Congrats. Thanks. So where are they sending you? Northwest. Virgin's retiring. It looks like they're sending yeah, uh, we Bay for like life. Give a yell. So it means Avon and Sugar, and then I have to get another they soldier like him. Fucking district's a mess. What is it? Yeah. Hey, good seeing you. Me too. When you all came downtown, the job changed. Down here, we make big cases. Big, hairy, bald cases. Like this Boxdale <laughs> thing, right? And all that mess you call police work down in the districts? All that fuck somebody up and rip and run bullshit? It won't play down here. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? This is what makes cases, gentlemen. This. The work. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> we got hurt, man. Nicely done. <laughs> Didn't he say that to Stringer Bell when he left the zoo? He's like, nicely done in the first episode. He said the location. Show up. Yo, Rock Rock ain't here in 10 minutes with my re up. Whoop his ass, man. Yo, Bodhi on some different level now. <laughs> now, I understand you did a tour in Homicide years ago, but let me tell you how I run this unit, because how I run it is how it runs. You do not play the game for yourself, you play it for us. If you remember these few rules, you'll find me to be supportive and reasonable. Very reasonable, sir. <laughs> Shut they say about me. Zip it up when you're done, Jay. <laughs> he knows straight away. He knows straight away. Less than, less than, oh no, we got the black sofa now. Bodhi then up changed it up. Hey, we playing some Ja Rule, I hear that shit. Yo, Dink. What the fuck was that? Huh? You taking niggas money, then you serve him? What the fuck? Uh, baby. 
I'm not always I'm there when you call, like but I'm always you on time. What a banger. You doing it. Someone snapping pictures got the whole deal. <laughs> yeah. Directing their own mistakes they made. <laughs> you gotta tighten up around here, yo. Hell of a case. I read all about it in the papers. You done good, kiddo. Who's your daddy okay. now? Then he also takes Nikisha Lyles, DJ Crescent. The two project murders that matched that gun. Both the stick up boys. And Little Man. Little Man? Yeah, body found up behind the reptile house in Druid Hill. <sighs> he gave us that one just for fun. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he also takes William Gant. I know, it's bullshit. Well, how do you tell him? He said a contact wound? Yeah. Doesn't play. Gant had no compression, no stippling. Wound was to the front. But he's talking out of his ass. Yeah, I know it, but this motherfucker's just taking murders just to take him. He's taking life, no parole for shooting a cop. What the fuck? Might as well try to spring bird for killing Gant. All right. <laughs> That's the same as the uh, 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 uh. <laughs> What did I do? Be happy now, bitch. I don't know if it's all about you, McNulty. Oh, we're hurting you anyway. Oh, there we go. Yep, the cycle begins again. Robin the Copper. Oh, that's that guy. Oh. This is such a great ending to this season because it leaves it on such like a little bit of an ambiguous note in terms of like, okay, a couple got sent away, but what's season two going to really be about here? Because the game's going to continue. It's not game over yet. They've all been reassigned now to boat duties, harborside police. <laughs> Coastal patrol. <laughs> and the game continues. <laughs> the money man. I said it. I said it. I said it. Listen, you put away a couple guys. You get the king, that king eventually is going to be replaced, or there's going to be a plan B. The game, the game's going to continue on. It's a massive systemic issue. Like, it's going to continue. Like, you, you can't stop this. And I feel like this montage here at the end just, like, solidifies that no matter who you put away, there's always going to be someone to fill in that void. But I just feel like now, like, they got nothing on Stringer, so he's... That's Omar. Man, you fucking want. Take about the 400. Damn. <laughs> All in the game, yo. <laughs> All in the game. <laughs> Whack with that thing. This. This show. Oh, show. Ah! <laughs> Man, you had to just pull it back up on Omar. I was actually going to mention Omar earlier in the episode. I'm like, all right, this guy's been laying low. Let's see how they're going to insert him back. But I don't know what season two is really going to... Like, obviously, it continues ticking. They think this case is closed. But obviously, um, Stringer and Avon are going to be much more careful in their operations now. And obviously, there's still the political side of things where the money is potentially leading to the senators and those corrupt politicians. But... The FBI only wanted to make it about that. They didn't want to make it sort of like a, a dual case where it's like the money, drugs, and the politicians. We're only going for the politicians. And yeah, those guys get put away and we're going to potentially flip them and lie to their sentences just to get the um just to get the politicians. But yeah, it's still running. We back up. Uh, Yeah, Avon might be put away for a little bit. 
but we back up because Stringer's there, baby. The king's been put away, but the queen's there still free roaming. Um, and if you want the chess analogy, a lot of the pawns went up, but we're still surviving. We're still surviving, you know? The king's still being protected. He's away, but the queen's there still doing the dirty work, and I love it. I love it. Um, I cannot wait to see what season two is going to be about, what direction they're going to take. It might be a situation of something like potentially resurfaces and McNulty gets that little hunch again, or someone comes to McNulty about something and he gets back in because obviously they're all reassigned now. Um, so yeah, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. I cannot wait to see um, what season two has in store for us. I hope you guys enjoy my reactions to season one of The Wire. As always, it's been your boy Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.